All right, Monica Alba, thank you for that. Well, join me right now, Congressman Ted Lieu, Democrat from California, member of the Judiciary and Foreign Affairs Committees. He's also a former member of the U.S. Air Force Judge Advocate General Corps, that is also known as JAG. Congressman, always good to see you, my friend. Let's get into this here. I'm curious, first off, how you interpret the Florida judge's inclination to appoint a special master. And is there a political calculation at play in that? Do you think it might slow the FBI investigation? Uh, thank you, Alex, for your question. I had a security clearance prior to entering Congress, and as a member of Congress, I also have security clearance. If I had hundreds of classified documents in my home, I would have been arrested and indicted by now. Now, in terms of the special master being appointed, if that were to happen, I wouldn't have any objection to that because a special master is going to find the same thing that the Department of Justice found, which is that Donald Trump had hundreds of documents at Mar-a-Lago that were labeled confidential, secret, top secret, and then levels beyond top secret at the highest classification levels. Uh, that is a crime, uh, if true. Yeah, absolutely. Those SCIF documents you're referring to. But time-wise, does this add another layer or can it be done concurrently with kind of everybody's cumulative eyes on the process? Are, are you worried about delays? Uh, I think it is a horrible precedent to indict a former president of the United States. The only precedent worse than that is to not indict a former president <laughs> if you violate the law. So they've got to do this right. They have to cross all their T's and dot their I's and make sure they have an airtight case. So I don't mind if they take the extra steps to make sure that they have an airtight case if they were to indict Donald Trump. Got to say, I hadn't heard it put that way, but it was absolutely perfect. What about the FBI affidavit, which states that some of the documents that Trump returned to the National Archives appear to contain national defense information, NDI. You're a military veteran, so what concerns you the most about this? Early this year in February, a federal employee was sent to prison because she took some documents labeled secret back to her hotel room. So our country takes classified information very seriously. What Donald Trump had was far worse. He had documents labeled top secret, which means it could cause exceptionally grave damage to U.S. national security. And then he had documents above top secret that were labeled at their SCI and special access program level that only very few people could see that if they were released, it would cause even more damage in top secret documents. So we're talking about some very serious documents here and shame on any MAGA Republicans who are defending Donald Trump's actions. So what should the director of national intelligence be looking for in its damage assessment? And how do you gauge whether or not anything has gotten out, whether it's further lost or been passed along or somebody lifted it? I mean, how do you, how can you tell? So one reason that a damage assessment is being conducted by the Director of National Intelligence is if these documents had sensitive or highly classified information about our human sources, about U.S. intelligence personnel in foreign countries, their lives can now be at risk. And we know that more than Donald Trump saw these documents because there's surveillance footage of other people dealing with these documents, uh, including also Trump's lawyers. Hopefully they don't say anything. Uh, but we need to do a damage assessment to know if we now have to go through our human sources and make sure that their lives are protected or that they're brought back to the United States. I also note that under the Trump administration, there was an alarming loss of life of U.S. national intelligence human sources. So this is a very serious matter. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So the point you just made about uh, the video surveillance to the New York Times report, is that the incentive for asking for further surveillance? They're trying to see who was near the documents, who may have been able to handle the documents. So is that what it's looking for? We need to know who had access to these documents because they were in an unsecured location. Some of these documents, if they're marked uh, at the top secret or SCI or special access program level, they've got to be stored in a very secure, controlled location. Only a few people know about what's in those documents. You can't just have them lying around in boxes at Mar-a-Lago where different people can just walk in and read those documents. So this is a very serious matter. Anybody else honestly would have been indicted by now. 
You know what's interesting is listening to Trump defenders. Um, they have constantly shifted the goalposts. First off, they demand the release of the search warrant. Then the release of the affidavit. Now they want sensitive government secrets to be declassified and just put out there in the public. Let's take a listen to what some of them have been saying about that. There was a dispute over these records. They were removed from the White House. They're sensitive records. Um, they are stored in an improper, un insecure location. But that's not really a revelation. Uh, it, it reminds me of Hillary Clinton. <laughs> I'm looking at your screen. Uh, <laughs> redacted um, means cancel. Okay, so they canceled the affidavit. Why not declassify the documents they actually took from President Trump and show the public what they were? Care to comment on that, other than the part that clearly the folks at Newsmax think this is funny, but anything on that? Uh, John Yu's comments are insane. What he is saying is he would want top secret and documents beyond top secret to appear on the front pages of New York Times on your show so that I can see it, my dentist, my neighbor, and the Russians and the Iranians solely to protect Donald Trump. This is cultish, un-American, treasonous behavior. You cannot just declassify all these documents and put it into the public domain simply to prevent Donald Trump from prosecution. Uh, that is a very treasonous argument, and any MAGA Republican making it should be ashamed of themselves. You know, some um, Trump defenders, uh, and that would include Cash Patel, have raised questions about whether recovered documents were classified or not. But then the affidavit points out the statute does not actually use the term classified information. Rather, it criminalizes the unlawful retention of, quote, information relating to the national defense. So... Does declassification even matter? So with regards to your statutes, that's a very good point you make. Technically, you don't have to have the markings and whether the documents were classified or not. And I do know there's a big difference with the Hillary Clinton case. The inspector general found that the documents were not properly marked on her server, that she did not know they were classified. This is a very different case with Donald Trump. He knew uh, they were classified and he intentionally took them. And I also note that if the MAGA Republican argument is that these should be declassified, then they've got to ask themselves, why do we want names and locations and identities of U.S. spies out there in Vanity Fair? That is an hmm. insane argument. Okay. Congressman Ted Lieu, I'm going to leave it with that. Pretty powerful words. Great conversation, as always, my friend. Thank you so much. It is